Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy here for the Daily Blob. And you know in the technology world, there's one of two ways you can run your technology business. You can either build and scale some really cool technology, or you can make penis jokes. It does appear you can do one or the other, probably not both. Uh, so I think this is interesting coming from Waymo uh, with their battle with Tesla. Or let's be honest, right? A boot has no quarrel with an ant, right? Tesla's battle with Waymo that they are just losing in the weirdest way. Like all of the Elon Musk fanboys are cheering the success that they don't have. <laughs> they don't have. This is proof that Musk's Musk's strategy is the winner. And you're like, but but Musk is losing. <laughs> but Musk is losing. <laughs> anyway, so I've talked about before. Uh, Elon Musk and the whole Tesla thing is very weird. Uh, to be clear, I own a Tesla Model Y. And to be clear, thankfully. My wife is has uh, decided that she wants to turn it in uh, and tr or trade it in for something else. And so we will probably be trading it in for a plug-in Ford Escape. Have I told you how much I love my plug-in Ford Escape? Anyways, I own a Tesla and it's just not a great car. <laughs> It's not a very good car. What can I tell you? The Ford Escape was made for people like me and the Tesla was made for Elon Musk. Now, when I drop $50,000 for a vehicle, I don't know, call me a funny bunny. I would like a vehicle that is actually designed uh, for me. But anyways, one of the big things with Tesla, right? Tesla is, I think, currently at like a trillion dollar valuation. And there's this idea that it's going to be worth $20 trillion because of underpants or something along those lines. Uh, and one of the things I've been talking about for a while is just how, how Tesla's momentum really has stalled. But even as the Tesla's momentum has stalled, uh, their fans are still raw 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 right this is proof of how successful they they will be right the the the, the models of tesla vehicles that are out uh, are dated uh, to say the best uh, they're not very good cars to drive to be completely honest with you <laughs> And again, I, I can drive one whenever I want. I try not to because it's not a very good experience. Uh, we've been told that felt that uh, the only way that Tesla is not a completely and utterly worthless company is if they come out with full self-driving. Uh, they still haven't actually done that. The Cybertruck is an abject failure. We don't know what's going on with the semi-trucks. There's just all of this, uh, this uh, idiocy uh, going on uh, with Tesla. And so one of the big things, you know, one of the things that Elon Musk does is when there is idiocy, See, when he is failing, he comes out with something uh, that looks like a win, right? He polishes a turd uh, so that all of his fanboys start clapping and the investors say, oh, this is why the stock is worth $1,000 or whatever else, right? And so that's where we've had uh, the uh, Tesla, the RoboTaxi service come out. So these are using Model Ys. Uh, he deployed this a couple of weeks ago uh, at this point. And proof of how valuable Tesla is as a company, they deployed five to 10 of these vehicles that could only be used um, by influencers or, or special people during special hours with an incredibly restrictive geofence. And even then, they were quirky. Let's just say that they were quirky, right? So, so Elon Musk seemed to be sitting there and realizing that his debut was lackluster. Waymo, I think does 250,000 uh, rides per month now. Uh, they have 1,500 cars on the road. They are constantly expanding. And so when you compare Waymo to RoboTaxi, RoboTaxi looks basically like a fucking alpha at that uh, uh, test at this point in time. So anyways, Elon Musk has to prove, has to prove, no, no, Tesla really is ahead. And so to prove that Tesla is ahead, he did not deploy a hundred vehicles. He did not deploy, um, you know, whatever else. He basically just changed the size of the geofenced area to make it larger, uh, to look like a penis, to look like a penis. It's like, oh, Oh, you don't, you don't think that Elon Musk is a serious CEO? Well, this penis-shaped geofence, that'll show you. So anyways, he came up with this penis-shaped geofence, which again was weird. I've talked about this before because it was larger. It was to give credit where credit is due. Uh, the penis shape apparently came out to like four square miles larger than Waymo's uh, geofenced area in Austin. And so that was supposed to be the win. That was supposed to be the proof 
of how successful a RoboTaxi is. So Waymo has a hundred cars on the road that have been running since something like March, um, but Tesla is winning because they have five to 10 cars on the road that now are in a penis-shaped geofence. Anyways, uh, surprise, 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 when Waymo is like, oh, oh, you think, you think that's a flex? Well, you know what we're gonna do? We're just basically gonna double the size of our area. And that's what Waymo has done. Uh, and you'll notice, notice the shape of Waymo's geofence. I really, I really, this is, this is like Rick and Morty level comedy right here. When you're looking at this shape, I want you to look at this shape and I want you to say what you think this shape looks like. Look at this shape right here. Look at this shape right here. Do you know what that is the shape of? Yeah, that's the shape of Waymo's geofence. That's it. Because the people that run Waymo are fucking execu tech executives and not want to be little fucking man children. Anyways, so, uh, so this is apparently uh, RoboTaxi's geofence now, and this is Waymo's geofence now, and so Waymo is now like double the size. Waymo's outlengths Tesla, Elon's phallic RoboTaxi map, backfires in Austin's expansion battle. So for this is from Electric, and they just talk about this where, uh, yeah, so Waymo was like, oh, you're going to expand your pathetic little piss ant wannabe robo taxi service. Well, in this single city, which is one of many cities we deal with, we're just gonna make it bigger than yours. We're just gonna make it bigger than yours. Uh, Tesla started a penis measuring contest with Waymo and it is losing. Oh, it's not only losing the technology race, it's losing the penis measuring race. Uh, the Alphabet company is expanding its service area in Austin beyond Tesla's uh, recently updated penis-shaped service area. Waymo is taking a few shots at Tesla in the announcement too. Uh, today, Waymo announced its own service area expansion in Austin, and it now covers uh, 90 square miles. Uh, so I do believe before with the penis shape, it was somewhere around 40 square miles. So I guess this would be over double that. Quote from Waymo, after a successful four months serving riders together, so they've been doing it for four months in Austin, uh, whereas uh, Musk has been doing it for about two weeks, Waymo and Uber are expanding our service territory in Austin, spanning North Austin to South Austin. Starting tomorrow, riders can take fully autonomous rides across 90 square miles of the city, including new neighborhoods like Crestview, Crestview uh, Windsor Park, Sunset Valley, Franklin Park, and more, as well as popular destinations like the Domain and McKinsey, uh, McKinney Falls State park. Waymo's service area, blue, is now much bigger than Tesla's black service area. But more importantly, uh, Waymo's service uh, operates completely autonomously without any supervisor with a finger on a kill switch inside the vehicle like Tesla. Did you hear the other day where the Tesla tried to kill the occupant? And then the occupant was like, hey! All right, they're gonna go over a railroad track. So apparently, apparently, right, they're driving in the robo taxi. There's a train coming down the railway. The Tesla doesn't see the train and the, uh, the onboard operator, or whatever, the, the, the safety driver had to brake the vehicle so that it didn't run in front of a train. Did you hear that? And then the funny part is, the funny part is the passenger gave a good review. <laughs> a good review because, yeah, that's, <laughs> That's the world that Elon Musk fanboys live in. <laughs> well, 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 look, the, the robo taxi could have killed me. If the robo taxi had done what it wanted to do, I would be dead right now. But hey, that's what safety drivers are for. And I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> anyways, don't try to explain, don't try to explain it to a Tesla fanboy. They just won't understand. They won't. Get it. Waymo is well aware of the difference and a poke uh, Tesla in its announcement of the service area expansion. Quote, we're proud to offer the only fully autonomous 24 seven experience for anyone in Austin and are excited to offer more destinations across the city. No wait lists or caveats and Austin customers have been enjoying their experience, giving their Waymo trips 4.9 out of five on average. Uh, there are more than a hundred Waymo vehicles on Uber in Austin and that number will continually grow to hundreds over over time. Waymo now serves uh, more than 700 square miles. Uh, so as we said here, this is like 90 square miles. So Austin is one city they deal with. In total, they serve over 700 square miles across the US and it continues to expand uh, pretty fast. So yeah. Yeah, that's what's going on in the autonomous uh, vehicle world. Uh, Elon Musk is making penis jokes and Waymo is scaling their technology.
which, you know, is basically how 2025 goes. 2025, that's how this shit is going. So yeah, it'll, I'm gonna be curious to see where the breaking point is uh, for the Elon Musk fanboys and for the Tesla investors, just because Tesla is falling further behind and really, again, is not, is not that impressive at this point in time. Tesla was most impressive when they had quite literally no competition, right? That was always the weird thing. Like Ford could have created like vehicles. Uh, Chevy created the Volt. Volt was considered a very good car, right? There were all of these car companies that could have created electric vehicles, but because of profit margins, because of union contracts, because of a lot of things, they didn't get into the electric car world. Uh, Tesla got into the electric car world and they took over. And so, they, so Elon Musk was able to push Tesla forward and become a leader in electric cars, essentially because there really was no competition. And even the competition that there was is, is weird. Like here in the United States, right? BYD, right? BYD is about to fucking spank Tesla, right? BYD is going to fucking embarrass the shit out of Elon Musk and prove that he was the greatest mind of a different generation, not this one. But what's curious is if you look in the United States, the major car companies here are just basically completely whiffed. As I say, I have the plug-in Ford Escape and it's a great vehicle, right? If I could buy a 100% electric Ford Escape, I would be fine with it. Because all I want, all I want, that's what I get from the, the Musk fanboys. Oh, oh, well, the moment you said your Ford was better than a Tesla, you lost all credibility. It's like, look, I don't know. I mean, the computer in the Tesla is probably better. To be clear, the computer in the Tesla is probably better. Right, uh, my, 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 my plug-in Ford Escape. To be clear, there, there is no path for my plug-in Ford Escape to go to fully self-driving. Now, to be clear, whether there's a path for my Model Y to go to fully self-driving is question mark too. But maybe, maybe the Model Y will. The Ford never will. But here's the thing, right? I just need a car. You just give me a car with a fucking electric drivetrain, and that's literally all I want. I don't believe in full self-driving yet. I don't believe in a lot of these bells and whistles. I don't need to play fucking Doom uh, on my, my car's infotainment center or any of that kind of crap. Do you know what I want? I want a Ford Escape that's electric. Boom. Okay. But to be clear, to be clear, uh, you know, Ford is weird about it, right? Ford, Ford has pushed some with the, the Lightning, the F-150s. I used to have an F-150, loved the F-150, right? They've pushed some in the F-150. They're doing adequately there. They're pushing some in the, 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 the Mustang Mach-E. That was actually a very nice car to drive. But it's like... <sighs> Right, I mean, they are they doing something? Yeah, they're doing something. They're actually not doing too bad at the something that they're doing, but they're not really pushing that far forward. So it's easy to look at Elon Musk and say, oh, look at how brilliant he is because he expanded Tesla's basically in an area where there was no competition. But if you start looking at these other projects uh, where he's trying to compete now, like with Tesla, we start looking at autonomous, autonomous driving, is in autonomous driving, there is other uh, real competition, right? There is Waymo out there. There was GM Cruise. I don't know what happened with GM Cruise. GM Cruise like dragged somebody down the road. <laughs> Come on now. If Musk did that, it would be fine. Anyway, you had GM Cruise. We're going to talk about a, another one of these companies that's coming out in a little bit. And one of the curious things here is that there, there actually is real competition. Like people see the real value in going after this particular market space. They have the technology to go after this market space. They have the ability and the capital to go after this market space. And so now he's competing in that area. And what we see out of Musk is instead of competing on product or service or quality, he's, uh, he's competing on penis jokes. And I wonder at what point um, do the investors get tired of it? Right, so with autonomous driving, he has fallen behind. With electric cars, he has fallen behind. When they talk about things like their robots, there's a shit ton of robots out there. I'm actually surprised as I do research on humanoid robots, there are a metric crap ton of uh, humanoid robots out there. There's this idea that Tesla is gonna be worth $20 trillion because of humanoid robots. Then here's the thing, maybe the entire market, maybe the entire market of humanoid robots will be $20 trillion or something, but, He's only gonna get a sliver of that, right? That's, 
that, that market share is between every company in that market space. And, and do you have any excitement for a Tesla humanoid robot? If you were told you could get one of 20 different humanoid robots, is there some premium that you would put on a Tesla humanoid robot? You know, I talk about that with sales, right? You sell the sizzle, not the steak. One of the curious things with those, uh, those, those Optimus uh, bots is where is the sizzle for those Optimus bots? Why is an Optimus bot, why, what is the je ne sais quoi about that that, you know, wouldn't come from one of the competitors that, that NVIDIA is creating or something like that? So I'll be curious to see uh, where this ends up at the end of the day. And I'll be curious to see what happens with, uh, with Tesla. Basically, basically te Tesla is allowed to survive because we do not allow Chinese electric cars in the United States. I do believe the moment they allow Chinese electric cars in the United States, Tesla dies. <sighs> so is that good business? Is that good business? Or is that just coasting off of legacy? Anyways, so what do you think about this? What do you think about Waymo expanding their area uh, in Austin after Elon Musk's penis joke? What do you think about Elon Musk, you know, not building a better product, not building a better service? Basically, he's trying to compete with <clears throat> penis jokes. Would you prefer to have a CEO that's really good at penis jokes or really good at scaling? I don't know. Put your thoughts down below. Uh, whether they're good, uh, give us a thumbs up, give a thumbs down. Whether it's a good comment or a bad comment, all that YouTube cares about in the modern world is an interaction. So give us those interactions, and I'm sure those little Musk stands out there will. Well, well, I, I actually, Eli, the reason that Tesla is superior is because when I had a dream last night, I dreamed a $20 trillion dream. Anyways, put it down there. Put, put your little $20 trillion fever dreams down there. And with that, see y'all later.